what's going on guys, CEO here with week 6 of the NES, uh, this week we're going up against a new coach, um, not a new team, he's just taken over a team that's actually pretty scary to be honest, um, and make a lot funny is one of my personal favorite megas, um, I just love really fast fake out spam, um, and normal fighting with Scrappy is pretty much perfect coverage offensively. Uh, Sylveon can be really scary, but given the lack of bulk on his team, I kind of figured he'd bring more of an offensive one. Um, I prepped for a Scarfed Sylveon, but, I mean, there's only so much that you can do. Um, for Alligator, it's really scary if I let it get up a D-Dance and I'm not prepared for it, it can kind of just start to run through my team. Uh, Dawn Fan's pretty bulky, uh, good Rabbit Spinner, uh, good Stealth Rocks, oh, sorry, <laughs> good Stealth Rocks. Um, can definitely take a hit, so I gotta be careful with that. Uh, Haxorus is another scary sweeper. Um, kinda like for Alligator, if I let it get up a Dragon Dance, I can punch some holes in my team. Uh, Hatters actually use it, like, devastatingly in the UCL, so I know what it can do, kind of. Um, <coughs> so I'm prepared for that. Uh, x -Blood's also really scary. Another Scrappy Mon, actually, so, uh, <laughs> Spirit Tomb's not really gonna be super useful this week. Uh, Choice Scarf Boom Burst is obviously pretty scary, so I have planned for that too. Um, I'm gonna skip Articuno and Slowbro, actually. Well, no, I guess I can just explain them now. Um, Articuno and Slowbro were actually like midweek decisions that were uh, changed probably two or three days after I like seriously prepped for this team. Um, it used to be Alakazam and Electabuzz. Um, I was pretty scared for both, so um, not having to face both was pretty nice. Uh, Slowbro actually does quite a lot to my team, uh, just because it's slow, bulky, can spread T-waves, and it's like one of the few things on his team that can very reliably take a hit. Um, Warrior Psychic's good defensive typing. Um, I honestly wasn't really super scared for Articuno. Uh, freeze Dry obviously could kind of affect my team a little bit, I guess. Um, but I could just blow up Punch twice with Scizor. I had answers for it on my team, so I wasn't really tripping too much. And I brought, s <coughs> and I brought Stealth Rocks on Dino King, so it wasn't too bad. Um, Clawitzer I wasn't really super scared of. I know it hits hard especially, but it's super slow, and even with the Choice Scarf, um, I have a lot of things that outspeed it. Uh, Chandler, I kind of expected to come just because it's a good counter to Victini. It's a pretty good counter to uh, Breloom also, um, and I guess Scizor too, so there's a couple things on my team that it counters pretty well. Um, and finally, Minetric. Um, I didn't really expect Minetric to become this week. Like, it's a fast electric type that can bolt switch on me and stuff. Um, but I just thought that he had other threats that he would want to bring, I guess. So I didn't really prep for it that much. Um, so getting into my team, we have Florette the Nino King returning again. Um, another physically defensive or physically offensive um, life orb set. Uh, this coverage pretty much hits everything on the team, um, except for Articuno, I guess. Um, and Stealth Rocks is there to hit the Articuno, um, force a defog or a rapid spin at some point, and allow me to get momentum if I can get him up. Um, I'm built to outspeed Sylveon, I believe. Um, and I think a non-scarf chandelier, if I remember right. Um, I don't have my notes in front of me, but I definitely took time to speed creep all the stuff that I felt I needed to speed creep. Um, and that explains the extra bulk right here in HP. Uh, Mega Skrillex is coming back this week. Um, I thought that it had a pretty good matchup this week, especially if I used this 3 dark attack, 1 special attack set. Um, with this investment, I can lead with Absol, Mega, or if he leads on fan, I guess, um, trying to get rocks up early. Um, I can lead Absol, get a knockoff off. If he tries to EQ me, it's only going to do about 80% with the investment that I have. Um, and then I can knock off Ice Beam and KO it before it gets a chance to um, rapid spin and stuff in the future if it's trying to just go for the kill. Um, and then knock off Sucker Punch and Pursuit are all really nice for Chandelure and 
what was actually Alakazam, but is now Slowbro, so luckily for me, he still kept the psychic type in there. Um, I believe, oh, uh, the speed is once I mega, I am able to outspeed Haxorus by one without a Dragon Dance, is what the speed creep is for. Um, moving on, we have Kevia Berry Underbite, the Grand Bull. Uh, Kevia Berry weakens super effective poison type attacks, so instead of taking 2x from that, I just take neutral damage. Uh, pretty standard set this week, honestly, but I didn't really need to go too far outside the box with this. Um, I thought about Assault Vest since I was running four attacks, but the Kevia Berry just maybe, um, it made me able to switch into Haxorus, um, very, very reliably, because I only take, like, 20% or something like that after, um, a Poison Jab from that, and as, <clears throat> as far as I know, that's the only Poison type coverage he has on his team, but it's also the only, like, reliable Fairy counter that he has on his team, um, it was one of the main weaknesses that I noticed, so I figured Gramble was going to be pretty important this week. Um, another important mon this week is Vaporeon. Um, I needed a special switch in. Um, obviously he has pretty intimidating spe er, physical setup in for Alligator and Haxorus and stuff. Um, but I was pretty worried about Chandelure. I was pretty worried about x -Bloud. I'm um, pretty worried about Sylveon, so I need something that could come in and take hits, and Vaporeon does that very well. Uh, Ice Beam and Shadow Ball to hit KO what they are super effective against, and Heal Bell Wish is just for general team support. Um, I put Heal Bell on, not really expecting him to bring a whole lot of status against me, but um, if he brought Flame Body Chandelure um, in practice, I had a tendency to get burned a lot. <laughs> So I just wanted to make sure that my physical attackers weren't completely screwed, I guess. Um, <coughs> moving on, we have Psilocybin, the Breloom. Uh, another fairly standard set, uh, Expert Belt Technician allows basically all these moves to either 1-hit KO or 2-hit KO, everything that they need to. <coughs> um, if I get lucky with Bullet Seeds, I can even KO some stuff I'm not supposed to. Um, Mock Punch 4 is just very reliable, um, and I'm EV to outspeed Sylveon, so if he switches in Sylveon thinking that he's gonna get a free Hyper Voice off, I can just pour it and put it to sleep. Um, and then either get another free Bullet Seed off, which actually does a lot of damage, or try to predict and go for Rock Tomb and stuff. Um, <coughs> and finally, um, I needed a counter to Megalopony, and while I had like answers to Megalopony on my team, especially with uh, Gramble, I wanted something that could basically just come in and Oko it if I needed to. Uh, Bullet Punch doesn't actually Oko, but if I can switch in on a, predi a predicted fake out or even a return, um, I can do a decent amount of Rocky Helmet damage and then either roost off and just stall or go for counter. Um, <clears throat> I have to scout first and make sure that he doesn't have a fire punch on Megalopony. Um, I don't want to just switch in Scizor thinking I could take a hit. Um, from full blood, I actually can take a uh, fire punch, but if I'm weakened at all, um, I'm going to need to be careful. <clears throat> and again, another pretty standard spread, I guess. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the battle, and we will get started. Alright, so, um, he brought the Manectric, which was pretty terrifying because I didn't really prepare for it at all, but outside of that, I pretty much got his team perfect. Um, I kind of thought that he would be ringing Slowbro because he doesn't really have very much bulk, um, which signifies to me pretty much right away that Sylveon's not going to be scarfed. Um, if it is, he's going, like, hyper, hyper, hyper offense, and I don't think that he's going to be doing that. Um, I'm just going to pause it here, like, when he's not, not done talking yet. Um, I figure Dawn Fan's probably just going to be the standard Stealth Rock EQ, um, Rapid Spin, other coverage move, maybe, of Dawn Fan. Um, Haxorus is probably going to be a Dragon Dancer, um, Lobin is probably just going to be a pretty standard Fake Out lead, or whatever. Um, and then Chandelure and Manetra can both be Scarfed this week, uh, they can also both be Specs, so I kind of have to scout for that and see 
you know, about how much damage each is doing. Um, it's also possible both are scarf or both are specs, um, so I gotta be really careful for that. Um, I have to say, I'm very, very, very surprised that Slowbro didn't come um, when he picked it up this week. I was almost carrying, like, guaranteed that he was going to be bringing it. Um, I didn't really think he was going to be bringing Articuno. Um, it's a good answer to Vaporeon, but I have other answers to it on my team, um, so I didn't think he was going to be bringing it. Um, so getting back to the battle at hand here, I kind of thought he was going to be leading Donphan uh, just to try to get up his rocks right away, because uh, the only way I have to prevent hazards on this team specifically is Magic Balance, Absol, and Defog, Scissor. Um, it doesn't really do a ton to my team, actually, but I figure he might just want to get the residual. Um, if he leads a lot of money, I can just double into Scissor, who's like hard wall, or hard walls it. Um, but instead, he actually leads Minicric, um, which is pretty interesting. Um, sorry if you heard the sound, by the way. Uh, so I already don't really know what to do just because I feel like I'm kind of at an impasse here. <laughs> um, I don't know what he's going to go for, but I can take two HP Ices with my Nido King, so I just figure that I should go for that, because why not? Um, instead goes for Flamethrower, I guess. I'm not really 100% sure why he thought I would double into Scissor there. Um, but I make a decent call and it was 39% and I figure I can take another one, I calc it and I know that I can live in HP Ice. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and fire off an Earthquake because nobody on this team wants to take it. Um, he goes for another Flamethrower, I just go for EQ, knock this thing out right away. Um, take, take Life Orb damage just because that's an interesting side effect of uh, Sheer Force Dino King. Uh, you don't take damage if the move actually has a secondary effect that's nullified by sheer force, um, but you do take the life orb damage if it's just like a standard move that's being boosted by life orb. Um, I didn't know that until this week, uh, so yeah. Uh, so I figure he's gonna try to just pick off, um, you know, King here with a fake out. Um, according to my team, at least, it's fairly free damage. It's not really gonna do anything to, uh, it's not going to do anything to Grample, to be honest, but I just decided to go ahead and double into Scizor here. Um, I have a Rocky Helmet, so if he does go for a fake out, it's actually going to do more damage to him than it is to me. Um, I'll be able to roost off even if he has Fire Punch and be able to go from there. Uh, just kind of do a little bit of chip damage to this Lobby, basically. Um, so he may go evolves and go straight for a power up punch, which actually kind of surprised me. Um, I didn't really prefer for a power up punch set, but I also didn't really think that my team could easily be set up on like that. Like of all the setup that he had, power up punch lop and he just didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, so I calc it and I can actually live by jump kick here and just go straight for um Sorry, I'll just go ahead and pause it right here. So I can actually go ahead and live a high jump kick at this point if I wanted to and just go for a counter and take this thing out. Um, but if he has fire punch, uh, which isn't very likely because he would have to be a power up punch, fire up punch, like fake out high jump kick set, I guess. Which is possible, but kind of weird. Um, in case he was that weird set, I instead just decided to double back to Gramble here, uh, get him back down to 1x attack. Um, as he goes for high jump kick and it does absolutely nothing. Uh, Gramble is very bulky <laughs> when you invest it right um, and give it intimidate. Um, so here, I kind of figure he's going to switch out, but nothing on his team wants to take a player off. So I figure why not just fire one off. Uh, he stays in in Thunder Waves. I didn't know Lobin even got Thunder Wave, but apparently it does. Uh, I don't really know why he decided to Thunder Wave Gramble, to be honest, just because Gramble's already ridiculously slow. Um, it's not like he's actually going to be outspeeding anything anymore, anyway. <laughs> Um, but whatever, Gramble gets another kill, so it's cool. Um, and he goes into Dawn Fan here. Um, I'm not really 100% sure why, because I could have had Ice Punch, and in a couple of previous drafts I actually did have Ice Punch on this Gramble, um, and that would have been a 2-hit KO. <laughs> but I just decided to save Gramble for Haxorus, uh, just as a clean switch in here. Um, and just go ahead and double out into Breloom, because it just takes an EQ very well. And at this point, he doesn't take a Bullet Seed, 
on anything really. Like even if Axorus comes in, it actually gets kind of destroyed, I think, by Bullet Seed if I remember right. Um, and if not, I have other moves for Axorus. Um, so, I just fire it off. Uh, he goes into Sylveon, and even with only three hits, it still looks like it's going to be a 2 KO. Um, if you watch my team builder, you know that I'm already built to outspeed Sylveon. Um, unless he's a Choice Scarf variant, which I determined from team builder that he wasn't. Um, I decided to risk Brailing here. Um, if he was a Choice Scarf variant, I would know that, and I would be able to have a switch in accordingly. Um, it'd be a little annoying because Braylon still does some work to his team, but I just decided to go for it anyway. Um, and I put him to sleep. Um, I require it, it required a pretty significant speed creep to be able to outspeed max speed Sylveon. Um, so I figured he wasn't really expecting it from me. Uh, given the way the set was, it looks like it was actually probably like a pretty bulky Sylveon, like maybe both. Uh, special defensive and HP. Um, not 100% sure, but I think so. Um, so here he just doubles out in Chandelure on my Bullet Seed because he knows that a decent roll on Bullet Seed will actually do a lot. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to stay in because I know he's going to go for a Fire Blast. Uh, Karen does not care. <laughs> ironically enough. Um, so here he just goes out in Haxorus. Um, I have no reason not to go for an Ice Beam here. Um, if he goes into Sylveon, he goes into Sylveon, whatever. Um, but if he goes into Haxorus or Donphan, thinking that he can take um, a Scald for some reason, or just trying to sack it, um, I'll be able to do decent damage. So I go for the Ice Beam, and like I said, it's to a KO. Um, <clears throat> I could stay in. Uh, take an Outrage here, or a Dragon Claw, or whatever, and just go for the kill with Vaporeon. Um, I was kind of thinking about the differential for Vaporeon at this point, because I don't think Vaporeon's actually gotten a kill, despite how important it's been to my team. Um, but I just decided to do a smart play. Uh, double to Grapple, Intimidate, he goes for an Outrage, it doesn't do anything. Um, so here, um, if you watch the team builder, you know that I have a Kebby Berry, specifically for Poison Jab Haxorus. Um, that was kind of his most reliable switch, or counter to Hax, or to Granville. So I figured he was probably going to be bringing it. Uh, he brought it, and it still did absolutely nothing. Um, and he sees that he's life orb, and I get paralyzed, which is annoying, but not really the end of the world. Um, the fact that he's not Choice Scarfed is nice. He's probably a Dragon Dance set, but, uh, Granbull counters that pretty well, and I have... Uh, four forms of priority on this team, and Sucker Punch on Absol and Nido King, uh, Mock Punch on Breloom, and Bullet Punch on Scizor. Uh, so I'm not really worried about Dragon Dance, to be honest. Uh, so I just decided to stay in, go for a play rough, uh, and kill this thing. I live, again, <laughs> which is ridiculous, and then I miss the play rough, which kind of sucks. Um, so, unfortunately, this isn't going to be a 6-0. Um, I got a little unlucky here, but that's okay. Um, I didn't need a 6-0 at all, and um, I just wanted to make sure that I got a free switch into whatever I needed to to pick this thing off, and at this point, I could have really switched into anything. Um, <coughs> I decided ultimately to switch into Mega Absol to get a kill, finally, because Mega Absol needs a kill. It's been like five weeks and it hasn't gotten a kill yet and I accidentally misclicked here. I was supposed to click Sucker Punch and instead I clicked Ice Beam. So I take a fat outrage for no reason and basically let this thing drop. Um, not entirely, but <laughs> I'm honestly kind of surprised that regular Absol was able to take, a, um, take an outrage which is kind of ridiculous to me, um, but I should have just went for Sucker Punch and I should could have been able to clean up here. Um, because I didn't, I thought he had Ice Shard, so I decided to go to Breloom. Um, it wasn't going to be like the best switch in in the world, but <clears throat> Breloom was pretty useless at this point, in my opinion. Um, since he went for Earthquake, for some reason, um, I was able to get another round of Bullet Seeds off, and I get actually a decent roll and knock out the Stomp Can. Um, so I'm feeling pretty confident at this point, because he has Chandelure, and then, um, Sylveon who's sleeping. And I'm pretty sure the Chandelure Scarfed, given how it's been playing so far. 
so I come back in, switch in the Fire Blast, and at this point I want to reveal Shadow Ball so he like knows that he has to keep switching out like this. Um, it doesn't do anything to Sylveon, and I prefer to take a Hyper Voice here. Um, says so he's bulky enough to be able to take one and fire off a bullet punch here. Um, fortunately just missed the KO, um, but it stays asleep anyway. Um, so I figure at this point he's going to switch into Chandelure, um, but it's not really a big deal. I'll just get a little bit of chip damage and go for the bullet punch in case he decides to stay in. Um, I figure he's going to go for a fire blast again, so I'll just double back out. Um, he makes a nice play and goes for Shadow Ball and the way that the Vaporeon's coming in because it does a little bit more damage. Um, but he also knows that he cannot take a Scald or a Shadow Ball. Um, I don't have Scald on this set, but he doesn't know that. Because uh, I haven't used Heal Ball at this point. Or, or Wish, actually. So I could just be like a 4 attack Vaporeon. Um, but I know that he has to switch out here, so at this point I just kind of decide to pull a double into whatever I want to clean up. Um, I could have just doubled into Absol here and just knock off and Sucker Punch and gotten two kills. Um, but I instead decided to double into Nido King because, I don't know, I just felt like he put in a lot of work this week and deserved all the kills, pretty much. Um, so I just go ahead and go for the Sucker Punch here, which is obviously more than enough to take it out. Um, Nino King comes in clutch this week with recalls, which is really nice. Um, I honestly don't really know why people. Oops, I don't really know why people don't run physical Nido King as much as they should. Like I get that it takes life warp damage and stuff, and I get that it doesn't really have as many moves that are boosted by uh, sheer force, but it still hits really hard, and people don't expect it like at all for some reason. Um, so yeah, pretty quick battle this week. Um, good game to Josh the Div 1. Your team really terrified me, actually. Um, and I wasn't really sure what to expect given that you're a new coach to the league. Um, <coughs> but yeah, uh, next week we are going up against Super Nerd 92 and the Seattle Wingles. Um, if you guys don't know, I was actually the person that helped like recruit Super Nerd into this league. Um, he's been my assistant coach since the preseason of this week, so he knows my team pretty well. Um, I actually know his team pretty well too though, because I've been helping him practice too, obviously. Um, so, next week should be very interesting. Uh, the battle of our NFL, I guess. Um, so yeah, I will see you guys next time, and have a good week. Bye!